Hey, it's David from MK Dub, and from time to time, I get questions about my recording rig. And after many years of trial and churning through gear and frustration, I finally discovered my perfect solution for the ultimate recording hybrid inside the box, outside the box production solution. The 500R8 from Cranborn Audio. Now, before we get started, I just want to say I paid full price for my Cranborn 500R8. This is not a paid product uh, sponsor video. Bought it from Front End Audio the week it came out. Thank you, Ryan. I mean, for me, it's the perfect hybrid recording solution. And I'm so, so happy with it. I did a whole Twitch live stream detailing all of my gear that I use in it and how I use it. The gear, the modules I chose in it, why I chose them, and I've edited it down, edited all of the rambling out, a lot of the rambling out, a little bit of the rambling out, and I've edited it down to this video. Hand to heart, gun to head, uh, however you want to say it. Like if I had to pick just one piece of my studio that I could keep and maybe I had to liquidate the rest of it, this, believe it or not, this, not my Moog synthesizer, not my Electron mono machine, not the Pro 3, not any of the effects pedals, but this would be what I would take with me. The Cranborn 500R8 rack. How awesome having all of my devices in one kind of entry point, in one interface. And I, I was trying not to use that word interface because an audio interface means a certain thing. And I'm just talking about a general interface, you know, like, like before I would have my audio interface would be a separate box, my MIDI interface that would allow me to connect to, to my computer would be a separate box. All my outboard, outboard gear would be a separate box of my preamps and my EQs, my compressors. So kind of trying to interface with all that, the different gear was really um, inconvenient and, uh, um, and, you know, I say inconvenient and it sounds like such a, a trivial matter, but, you know, when you're talking about workflow, anything that kind of stops your flow is, is kind of more than inconvenient because it, can it can kill the vibe of your session. And if you lose the vibe, the vibe is everything, right? The vibe is the whole point. And so anything that jeopardizes the vibe is, is critical to like try to remove that. And so that's why I love this box so much is that once I got this box, everything kind of, all the different points where I had to like interface with my preamps here in a different spot and interface with my compressor here and try to figure out like which cables I need to plug into my, my audio interface to get it working and then try to configure my, my DAW so that way it was recognizing everything. It was such a pain uh, in the butt. And then once I got this one box, one entry point to deal with all of those things, you know, and, and it, it made it so much easier. One of the things I really appreciate about, about this box is that it allows me to send sounds into the box, but also out of the box very, very easily. When I want to capture YouTube samples, I can send, I can process them directly th directly through my 500 series modules and capture them also through my 500. So for instance, I can send them out of, let's say the Vitas or out of the 511 EQs here, EQ them how I want to and send, and then send this output of this back into the Vitas preamps to add some more extra transformer mojo and then record that sample in, in my, in my DAW here. I'm trying to figure out where to put my finger so you can see, <laughs> uh, I guess right here, huh? Yeah. So in, in the DAW down there, Right, I can input, uh, it can capture channels five and six, and that will give me my YouTube sample. And I didn't need to wire anything except for just a couple of patch cables here on my patch bay. If I want to do that before with all the different boxes in my audio interface, I would, it would mean my hit spin, and I probably wouldn't even bother. And so this is really the heart of my system. If you've seen my last single video for Ghost Believe in Us, where I'm in the cemetery, I took this with me to record my solo in the cemetery, so I like to take it. When I do my Sith jams outside, I bring it outside. It's heavy. I mean, once you fill it up, the, the rack, it's with you know, the patch bay and the, the, I don't even know what the line converter, I guess is what this is called. Yeah, once you fill it up, uh, it's about 50 pounds. And so, you know, I haven't gone hiking with it, like hiking up any mountains or, or anything like that. But... I do like to kind of take it with me and record live and try to get some of the the scenery, you know, some of the surrounding environment, get catch some of that vibe in whatever I'm doing at the moment versus kind of just miming, you know, a music video or whatever.
Yeah, this is the heart of my studio. And yeah, once I got this box, I stopped worrying about how crappy the recording sounded and realized or didn't have to worry about it anymore because I knew that anything beyond that was just user error on my part, not being able to capture the sounds that I wanted. It's funny, you know, I watch a lot of videos and they will have amazing gear, right? Like, like just like tens of thousands of dollars worth of synthesizers. And then they're going to run it through like, I don't know, like some cheap Focusrite interface, you know? And for me, that I never really understood that. Every sound that I record goes through this box. And so I wanted every sound that I recorded to sound as good as possible. You don't want to take your amazing $8,000 Moog 16 and send it through your, you know, Sapphire interface or whatever. Like, you, it, there's the difference. <laughs> and uh, when you do it, when you, when you do it, when you switch for the first time, you'll hear it and you will, um, you will kind of kick yourself. I kicked myself. It houses eight 500 series modules, but it's actually an all-in-one type of box. So it's actually has an interface built in, some converters, MIDI, ADAT to it or other digital devices once they enable that with the SP PDIF or whatever. I do have a Aldient 8-channel preamp that I connect to it via ADAT. Uh, let's talk about the 500 modules that I put in here. So um, yeah, um, really quick, I because I do so many synthesizers and direct in effects and things of that nature, and not so many so many microphones, I have don't have I don't have that many preamps in my 500 series box, though it's still you know a good 40% of my box is still preamps. But the preamps I chose, I chose specifically that um, they work well with synthesizers or they work well with line in. Um, the Avitas MD7s here even have a send and return for effects pedals, which is really, really handy when you do as much uh, effects processing as I do. And so I chose uh, the Fetus MD7s because they sound amazing, first off. I mean, even when you just run sound through them, like not even uh, doing anything, just turn it up and you're like, and if you have, you know, I mean, if you're just comparing them to themselves, it's kind of hard to hear the difference. But if you have anything in the, you know, another preamp, and I've shot it out against other preamps, um, so that you can actually A, B them and compare them, you, you'll you totally hear a difference. I mean, it's a subtle difference, don't get me wrong, but it's the difference between like using sea salt or using iodine table salt, you know, like you're gonna taste that chemical. If you bury it in some soup, you're not really going to, to have a hard time. But if you, you know, if you can, can, can taste them side by side, you'll totally be able to tell that difference. It's a subtle difference, but it's significant. And so I got these. Um, they also have a high pass filter, which I appreciate a lot. The other preamp I added to it, and after a long kind of search and churning through gear, and if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen some of the preamps come and go. I settled on, I don't want to say settled, but I landed on the louder than liftoff chroma here. And the reason I chose this one specifically is uh, because it gave me a lot of versatility. At the end of the day, a preamp, you know, is a preamp. And uh, if you're not recording a microphone with it, you're recording synthesizers mainly like I am, then you're not going to get a lot of, you know, extra functionality with something like a classic preamp. And so Loud and Liftoff gives me two flavors. It gives me the A, which is the models the API flavor, or it gives me the N, which models the Neve flavor. But I appreciate having those flavors. I don't know how close they get to the original. I do note that they kind of generally hit the mark of what you're supposed to hear, which is the A is kind of a little bit punchier. The end is a little bit more kind of bloomier and fuller on the low end. The nice thing about the louder than lift soft is they do take a line or mic level. Usually I have it in line. Um, and they also uh, allow you to insert a color module slot, so um, which is basically almost like a hard and analog plugin. And in this case, what I've done is I've added, I'm using, I'm running the Royal Blue color module, which is basically just another um, Neve modeled transformer to add more, even more color, more saturation. Since I do a lot of mixing and summing outside of the box, summing through, this is a summing mixer as well. I forgot to mention that. The Cranborn box does summing mixing. And so I like to mix through this and sum my mix before I send it for the final mastering or whatever. And so, um, so yeah, I really wanted a lot of mojo. I wanted some, I really wanted everything in my box to have transformers. I wanted everything outside the box to have a transformer on it. I mean, that's just it's just an idea that I got in my head, and it's my box, and I can do what I want with it. And so that's what I did. Both of these, I can drive the gain and then trim back the level 
so I can get some distortion or some saturation, but not be too loud on the, the module that comes afterwards. I had two Avitas MD uh, E12G uh, equalizers too, which are also really amazing. And the only reason I sold one was because for a stereo pair, it was just a pain in the butt to match them, you know, because they have 12 different sliders here and to try to match 12 of them exactly and then to document them. Um, and you can't really match them exactly because, you know, you're trying to deal with, I mean, each one of these uh, bands has 12, um, 12 dB of range on either side, so 24 total, right, plus, plus or minus 12. And, uh, you know, so you've got like about an inch to travel 24 dB. So you're never really going to get an exact match anyway. And I find I didn't, I didn't need a stereographic EQ. But uh, what these things do on drums is really amazing because it basically allows you to, to make the drum sound as whatever you want. You can totally transform the sound of the drums via each one of these bands. And so, you know, like if I wanted more kick, I could hit 60 or I could hit 120, 120 hertz to boost the kick, or if it was too boomy, I could lower the kick. If I thought there was too much, kind of like too much ring or too much low end ring, I could maybe cut down to 250. If I wanted more crack on the, the snare, I could boost 1K or 2K. So even if I, you know, get a bad sound, let's say a bad, but a generic drum sound, like with the mono machine, you know, I, I used, usually use the beatbox machine. And so a lot of times I want to change that sound once I get it in the mix. I'm like, ah, I really wish I had got that snare crack hitting harder a little bit. Um, this really allows me to do it in a way that's way better than I've managed to find with anything inside the box. And so, uh, yeah, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, if you want more hi-hat, you can hit, you know, around 4K or something. I went with the a pair of compressors. I went with the ECM 519. I did a lot of research on these ones. Couldn't find any other uh, 500 series compressors that had this feature set. And so, um, just, just so much functionality in such a small space. In the industry, the DBX160 compressor is kind of like a, a staple, even though it's inexpensive. It's a, uh, a staple in the recording studio, especially for drums. And so I shot these out, you know, hoping that I could save $500 per, per channel, $500, so like $1,000. I was hoping that I could replace these with the DBX560s, uh, which were the, the 500 version of the 160. And it wasn't it wasn't close. Let's move on to my EQs, the 511s. Now I've I've only messed with kind of top end EQs, and I landed on the 511s. At first, I start off with the um, the Crane Song Falcons. No, sorry, the Crane Song. Um, I think the Falcons are the compressors, but I had I start off with the the Crane Song EQs. I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head. And they sounded amazing, especially the 700 band. <laughs> I just love turning up that 700 and it sounded amazing. I also felt like I was spending a lot of time trying to find the perfect sweet spot. And me not being a professional audio engineer, I didn't know immediately what I needed to, to fix or what I needed to hear or what I, if I wanted to hear something, I didn't know exactly how to get there. And so I spent a lot of time you know, going through all the different bands and then switching them and uh, messing with the high filters and the low filters. And as amazing as they were, I, so, uh, I, I decided I wanted to try and maybe find something simpler. And I, I, I switched down to the five, not switched down, but switched over to the A-Designs 511 EQs. Uh, A-Designs, they're Electrodynes, but they're made by, a, the, these, these reissues are made by, um, by A-Designs. And Peter sent these to me and they haven't left. They, they sound amazing. I shot them out against another, a Neve, um, a Neve clone EQ, and the moment I plugged them in, I hadn't even done anything, right? They were just flat. And I was just running through the Neve clone EQ, and I was like, well, okay, that sounds kind of, you know, that sounds like something. And I switched over to the to the 511 EQ, just flat, and I was like, holy cow. And that was when I knew that these were amazing. So with that, that's the rundown of the 500 series gear that I have in my, my box here. A shout out to Sean and Els at, at Cranbourne Audio, uh, they're amazing. I mean, the service is amazing. And um, I mean, they've literally offered to meet up with me halfway across the country, halfway across the country, they're in England, so that's halfway across the world. They offered to meet up with me in California to deal with some issue that I was having with a box. I mean, the, the service is, is beyond crazy. So I wanted to do this video uh, and just to kind of, you know, give them some props and 
to 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 show some of the workflow here um, and why I this box is my number one, the number one thing that I want in my studio. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for checking it out. Now, if you'd like to see the workflow part of how I use this box versus just what's inside of it, be sure to leave some comments, some likes, subscribe to my channel. People would like to see this video and I'll be happy to make it. Until next time, I'll see you later.